If you're new here, welcome. Please subscribe and click the notification bell. If you are returning, welcome back. This is going to be a lot to unpack. It's going to be multiple things touched on. Just be patient, walk with me. All right, first I wanna show you this scene right here with Jade. Look, first of all, I wasn't driving. Second, my best friend who I've known since fourth grade is dead. All right, he's not walking around with a little boo-boo on his leg, so how about we just call that one even? The friend that Jade is referring to is Toby McRae. Toby McRae was taken out by Sarah. If Toby were still alive, he and Jade would be sitting around smoking on Mary Jane. They would have been drinking, they'd have been partying, and they would have just been sitting around being depressed that they can't leave. Toby being deleted encouraged Jade to want to have conversations with the other people and from or from Bill. It encouraged him to want to leave, have theories, including building a tower. It motivated Jade to figure out that they could use the electricity and the homes, even though the electricity doesn't make any sense, to use the lamps to be able to power a battery in order to power the radio that they work on in later episodes. If Toby McRae would have still been alive, Jay would not have done any of that. Hey, now, you guys wanna play house? Or do you wanna go home? Because I have an idea. Yes, the idea they had came from the motivation of his friend being deceased and him wanting to leave. And his friend being deceased or deleted is not just the main thing, but because it was made to look like it was one of the creatures is the key ingredient to his motivation. Had Toby had been deleted by another person in Fromville or would have succumbed to injuries from the car wreck or would have still been alive, Jay would have not done anything that we've seen him do in the entire series. Do you know there's not a single copy of the Bible in town? The reason why that is interesting and unique is because there's a copy of the Bible everywhere. Father Katri doesn't have a copy of a Bible, which to me is kind of weird in itself, but the fact that the Bible is the most popular book in history and it's everywhere, at least one per city per town, at least one, at least one different version, since there's like thousands of versions out there, the fact that there's not a copy of the Bible, in my opinion, is because Fromville is not in our reality or the reality that these characters come from. The Bible was mass produced after the invention of the printing press in 1450. This town, according to Tabitha's dream, the dream sequence, when Tabitha was in the lighthouse, when she went to the dates that was on that wall, the earliest date that was written is 1506, which means people have been going through this Fromville experience or cycles, at least documented since 1506. And I'm willing to believe that the cycles probably happened well before 1506. It's just that 1506 was probably the first time that someone realized a pattern and even realized that there was something going on besides things being random and they started to rationalize and make sense of certain things. I'm willing to believe that Fromville and this whole process and this whole being trapped in this place has been going on well before 1506. It was taking place well before the Bible was mass produced, which is why it's not in the city when Father Katri is talking to Sarah. In the towns, a lot of it seems more modern than 1506. There are certain things like a diner and a couple of other things that's more modern. So what I'm believing is that Fromville or this pocket dimension it moves and collects different buildings and different things in it, which is why you have the colony house that's that type of design. And then you have a diner and the motel, which has neon lights. Like all of this stuff is not from the same time or the same point in time, which is why all this stuff is different. And it's almost like the pocket dimension goes around gathering not just people, but also structures, animals, plants, and everything else. And in our little traveler's library in the diner, there's at least a dozen Robert Ludlum and Judy Bloom novels, yet not a single copy of the world's most popular book. 
in the diner, that collection, every time someone lives in a house in town and they become deleted, whoever moves in takes their stuff and puts it in the diner. Tabitha had pointed out the gym that the bracelet that she made for him that had a mistake in it, somehow it ended up in the diner's collection of other stuff. A bracelet was somehow put in the diner because all of the people who are currently on the show and from, they've had some type of connection to from well before they got there. And I'll explain that later. Nathan told me about the voices. things you've done you can still help the people of this town you could still do something good hey don't touch anything why because this this used to belong to all the people the people who lived here mm-hmm oh it's like the cavern of the lonely dragon yeah when the Kramanaka was lost in the rainbow sky she found a cavern where the lonely dragon lived. And it was full of stuff that nobody wanted. But for the lonely dragon, all the stuff is treasure. And guess what? What? In one of the big piles of stuff, there was the map of the rainbow sky. Ethan and his stories, I think some of his stories he actually reads or gets read to him. Other stories he gets from his dreams. What Ethan is describing, and I think what the writers are trying to communicate to us, is that this right here is the lair of the lonely dragon, stuff that nobody wants. And the map in there is the book that Jade found that belonged to the man that Victor knew that was in the same picture as Victor. That is not necessarily a map. It is how things work and from in the pocket dimension. And I'll explain that later on in the video. The Lonely Dragon gave it to the Kramanaka and then she wasn't lost anymore. So the Lonely Dragon is Kenny's mom because she is lonely because her husband is no longer with us. And the Lonely Dragon, being Kenny's mom, gave the book to Jade. Jade is the Kramanaka. Maybe we'll find a map in here. Yeah. Mom? Yeah. What's wrong? Nothing. The bracelet wasn't just on the ground. It was with a collection of other bracelets. She has a connection or the ability to somewhat communicate with an alternate or parallel reality. My theory is she and a lot of other people in From, they have a connection to a parallel universe. They have the ability to somewhat communicate, physically go to, or just connect it to a parallel universe. So what we're watching in Fromville, we'll say is universe A. And there's a parallel universe, we'll call it universe B. There's a connection between the two as far as people, places, and things. So when Tabitha lost the bracelet, it accidentally ended up in the pocket dimension of Fremville. Someone picked it up, they used it, and when they got deleted, their belongings with everyone else's stuff came into the diner. There's a clock in the background. There's some buildings, or we'll just say some houses that are from a completely different time period in the same place as a building with a clock like that, an analog clock, because not every building or home is a part of the same town. They're like brought there as the pocket dimension moves and start swallowing stuff up. So the same way that everybody was driving in different parts of the United States, they were driving in different directions, driving on different roads, and they all ended up in the same place, is because there's different portals you can drive into or enter into, or as the forest is moving, the portals in the forest that are moving also coincide with portals that are in the main reality. 
not the pocket dimension. So we'll just say reality A. And that's how different buildings and different people and different things are ending up in from is the portals are actually moving. And as the portals move, they're attached to portals in the regular universe, universe A and B stuff is being transported to the pocket dimension. People think the Bible is a fixed object, something written, completed. But how can the story be finished if all the players remain on stage? Writers, they had Father Catri say this because, and this is going to sound far fetched. <laughs> you don't have to be religious to believe this, but I believe the pocket dimension of Fromville has been around since the beginning of time. And I believe that in the beginning, when God said, let there be light and got rid of the darkness and got rid of the creatures that was in that darkness in all the different universes, all those creatures were transported to a pocket dimension, which is the forest in Fromville. That's why all of those creatures and different things that we've seen so far on the show, that's why they somewhat resemble things that we've seen in fiction, things that people have cited, saying that they've seen something that wasn't human. What they're seeing is stuff that comes from the pocket dimension of the forest and from Ville that sometimes gets out of the pocket dimension and goes into the regular reality. And then it's seen vampires, werewolves, different monsters, zombies, ghouls, different creatures that are seen that are antagonistic. That's a part of like folklore and fiction. All of those come from the pocket dimension of the forest and they go to the regular dimension and interact with people. It's possible that the Garden of Eden was also a pocket dimension somewhere in the forest, maybe the Garden of Eden. There's the tree of life there. But I believe that in the beginning, when the darkness was eliminated and those creatures in said darkness were also eliminated, they were put in a pocket dimension and it was never meant for humans to travel into the pocket dimension, but you're able to travel into said pocket dimension when yourself, which we'll call a universe and an alternate version of you will call B universe are both traveling at the same time to a portal and then both sides of you end up in the pocket dimension. And I'll explain more later on in the video. We call it the good book, but did you know it's actually comprised of 73 books? Did you know that? Matthew, Mark, Romans, Corinthians, 73 books, all filled with tales of Miracle and wonder. But there's also darkness in the Bible. Gruesome, horrible things. You know, since, since the night I arrived, there seems to be a question I keep coming back to. Seventy-three books. What if we, the people of this town, are living the book that has yet to be written? What if this is book 74? And Sarah, what if we were chosen? why I need you to tell me about these voices. So they're in a pocket dimension, which means in the pocket dimension, you can't just simply leave. I believe that in order to leave the pocket dimension, you have to leave by a ritual. More of that later on in the video. So if you pass away in the pocket dimension, your spirit, your soul doesn't travel to an afterlife you're stuck in the pocket dimension. I believe that these voices that Sarah is hearing are those who are deceased. 
And they're there trying to communicate with everybody. And in the beginning, they communicated with Victor's mom. And now they're able to communicate with Sarah. Victor's mom had the ability. Maybe Boyd's wife had the ability. Sarah has the ability to be able to commune with them and hear them. This is Jade and Jim at the tree. Jim is on top of the tree trying to hang the stuff for the radio. And this is where Jade, he touches the tree and there is blood on the tree. Blood is the battery to power a lot of stuff. Fuck. Oh, Jesus. Jade, I believe that what he touched on the tree was one of those blood symbols. We'll explain that later on in the video. Because he touched the blood symbol, he was able to be transported back in time along the same reality line. I believe those soldiers, as they're bleeding down, the blood can be used to make a large blood symbol. And I believe the blood symbol is what's used to be able to travel across realities within the pocket dimension and possibly even travel out of the pocket dimension. See how the blood's going to the ground? When the creatures are deleted, they look like that. They look like regular people who have been blown up and the blood is going on the ground. I believe the blood going on the ground, someone is meaning to collect the blood and use it for a blood symbol. They've carved the symbol in the tree. Whether you use blood to make the symbol or whether you carve the symbol, the symbol plus blood is what's needed to activate it. It looks like he's got thermal burns. What I'm noticing is his uniform doesn't look burnt. Just his skin looks like it's been changed. And then here's his eye. A part of it is white. I think eventually, if you stay in Frumville long enough, you turn into a creature because it looks like that's what's going on with him and possibly what's going on with the soldiers that are hung upside down that are bleeding out. I believe that this soldier is the one who deleted the other soldiers and hung them upside down. And anybody who's around, he's going to shoot them, hang them upside down to have blood go on to the symbol. I think you have to have a certain amount of blood in order for the symbol to work. And I believe those faraway trees, they somewhat been activated with the symbol. We just haven't looked at the tree well enough to see the symbol on the faraway trees. I believe all those portals are created using that symbol mixed with blood. They said they wanted to help, that they've been here a long time and they've been waiting for someone to come who would hear them. And them saying that they've been here a long time, this is more than likely the people who are deceased, who are stuck in the pocket dimension of Frumville and they are trying to go home. So I don't think that they're promising that necessarily the people who are alive will go home I think when they talk about going home, they're talking about themselves being able to leave the pocket dimension and go into the afterlife. Someone who could help them. Help them do what? Help them escape. Help them go home. Right. Help them escape. Help them go home. I believe a ritual has to be done and executed properly in order for the pocket dimension to release everybody for the voices or the deceased people to be able to leave the pocket dimension and go home. Unfortunately, the people who are alive, they might not be going to the home that they are thinking of when these voices are promising that people can go home. They said they were just like us. But why? They were just like us, but now they're deceased. Why did you believe them? Because? They told me things, things they couldn't know. They told me those two cars were coming and to stand out near the edge of town and I would see. So I believe that the voices or the deceased, they're able to see possible outcomes, kind of like Doctor Strange in the movie Infinity War using the time stone. They can see possible realities out of all the realities they're able to see that are possibilities. Two vehicles come into town and that's how they know that that was going to happen. They said it happened before. That two cars came on the same day. 
and everyone died. They said it was because of the people in the cars, but if... The people in the cars. So that means that the people in the vehicles are the ones that are deleting everybody. I think Vincent's mom and Vincent, they came at the same time someone else came. And Vincent's mom deleted everybody to try to perform some ritual. And I believe that in this cycle or this iteration, it's going to be Tabitha that's going to be trying to perform a ritual to delete everybody so they can go home. Either Tabitha or Jade. A lot of the manipulation has been centered around trying to get Jade to do certain things. I think it's going to be Jade who's going to be the one to try to delete everybody. Uh, last time, Victor said that the man who had that book with the symbols, he's the one that was deleting everybody. And I think this time it's going to be Jade. So I think last time the two vehicles that came, it may have been Victor and his mom in one vehicle and the guy who had the book with the symbols in the other vehicle and the guy with the book with the symbols, I think he figured everything out as far as a ritual and how to go home and that you needed blood in order to make the symbols work. And he started to delete everybody. And this cycle is going to be Jade. He's going to figure everything out and figure out that you have to use a lot of blood to create a large symbol in order for a portal to open up in order to leave the pocket dimension. And I think the voices or the deceased people, they're able to see possible realities and they, they see that Jade is going to be the one in, in order to do it. But I also believe that it could also be Tabitha because Tabitha has been getting dreams about going to the lighthouse. She's the one that saw people upside down in the lighthouse. I think it could be either Jade or Tabitha. It just depends on what people do, which will determine what solution that we get. And it could be Tabitha because Tabitha, when she was riding with Jim, they were going to get a divorce anyway. So I think if it came down to it, I think Tabitha would sacrifice Jim, especially since Tabitha blames Jim for Thomas, their deceased child, passing away. I did what they said. Said we'd be safe. We'd get to go home. Okay. Yeah, I believe that home that they're referring to is heaven. That's the home that they're referring to. I don't think it's home like where you came from. How would we get to go home? I don't know. They don't want to tell her how just yet. They're just somewhat manipulating her because if they tell her everything, she probably won't listen to them and won't do stuff. So according to Google, home is the place where one lives permanently, especially as a member of a family or a household. The voices, the home that they could be referring to could be heaven. It could be the afterlife. The writers for From, they're also the writers for the show Lost. And basically everybody passed away at different times and they all were in the church waiting on everybody to pass away so they can go to heaven together. Also in Lost, they dealt with time travel. I think in the show From, Instead of dealing with just time travel, they're also dealing with alternate realities, parallel universes, multiverse. That's kind of like a popular thing right now when it comes to television and movies is talking about the multiverse, alternate realities. I think the home that, that the voices are referring to is like heaven or the afterlife, just like we're lost. And I think that the voices are people who are deceased, who are trapped there, and they've been trapped here for like centuries and they're trying to go home, but they need people who are currently alive to complete a ritual for them to be released, be freed, and for them to go quote unquote home, which in my opinion is heaven. You still believe that they were telling the truth? They promised that Nathan would be okay. They, they promised and now, now he's, they probably saw a possible reality where Nathan would be deleted by her if she didn't kill the boy. The problem is, is that she went after the wrong boy. I'm going to show you that and explain it later on. I need, I need what? Paper. Now Jade is writing the symbol over and over again, and he's starting to become obsessed. So this is where Kenny's mom gives Jade the book with the symbols. 
Father Katri, he buried the bag that he came with because it had the bloody shirt on it that basically would link him with deleting the father of the boy that he gave the candy bar to. So the area that Father Katri is in, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven stones. Okay, seven stones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I believe that the area that Father Katri was at, where he buried the stuff, I believe the center of that, either you can control time with that or that tells you the time of day. And the reason why that's important is they more than likely are going to use that area for a ritual that we're gonna show later on in the video that's similar to what we saw on the cave paintings in the wall beneath Jim and Tabitha's house. And I got the idea of the sundial because if you look at this, at the talisman, the talisman somewhat looks like that's what it's supposed to be where you have at the top of here, you got 12, the sun pointing to the, the north 12, which means it's noon. And then you have your PM here and your AM there. Right now it's noon, then go into 3 PM, 6 PM, 9 PM. Now it's 3, 3 AM, 6 AM, 9 AM, then noon again. There's not a midnight, it's just kind of understood that if you're in between 6 p.m. and 3 a.m., it's going to be midnight. On the talisman, it's somewhat the same. However, they have the 12 a.m. listed. That symbol, that's the sun. So this is 12, 3 p.m., 6 p.m., 9 p.m., midnight, 3 a.m., 6 a.m., 9 a.m. There's some sundials that they don't have midnight, like the one on the right. Some of them do. It just depends. You can open up a portal at 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., so on and so forth. The idea is you can create a portal at a certain time of the day using the talisman. And the idea of the portal, whether you open it up at day or midnight is the goal is for you to connect with your alternate self. That's the reason why you have the head up here and then you got the legs, the head up here, then you got the legs connected. They're connected because you're connecting with your alternate self and an alternate reality. We'll discuss this more when we go into the blood symbols. There's like three of them. That symbol right there could be something Masonic. And let me show you, could be a compass and square. This is known as a square. It's used for measuring like a building. And this compass is used for measuring like on a map. So compass, square, and then this G in the center is G for geometry. These two are used for measuring because a mason is someone who is like a builder. So you have to like build and their symbols are a compass and a square used for building. And G in the center is geometry. Now, you know, in the center of the talisman is somewhat the same way where you have your square here. You got your compass here and this in the center has been left blank. Some symbols of compass and square don't have the G. It's kind of understood by people who use it. Recap, I think these are two people connected because the idea is to connect with your alternate self and then both have to connect using a compass and a square for measurement. And that's gonna be done out here in order to perform some type of ritual. So basically, Father Katri was on the run from the law. Wow. All the grass, all this grass is not cut. It is not cut. I haven't seen anybody in Fromville ride around with a lawnmower. The grass seems to be pressed down and matted down as if someone has been like pulling the weeds 
or pulling the grass from it, somewhat cutting it to keep the area clear. You wouldn't have to do that unless you were using it multiple times over and over. There's weeds in the back that's growing out, but this part right here that Father Katri is on, it seems to either be stuff that's been pulled up or pressed down in order to make the area clear for people to stand or sit on. The voices were able to see him because these are spirits that have been deceased and they can see and hear everything. And in addition to communicating with them, as far as Sarah, I believe that the creatures, when they sleep, they also can hear the voices and that's how they know everybody's name. This is Kevin. This is the boy that the voices were referring to. This is his creature bay. Because Kevin has an infatuation with creature bay, he lets her in. As she comes in, all of the people, or, well, at least 15 people in Colony House get deleted because of the creatures, because of Kevin's actions. If Sarah would have killed the boy, he would not have done that. He's the boy that the voices were referring to, and I'll show you in a minute. Idea that might actually work. And so this is Boy talking to Abby Stevens' grave or talking to Abby at her grave. Notice that or all the plants are just wild. And even, even what he is laying on is somewhat wild. Even though that's her grave, the plants grow pretty fast. Even though they dug up a grave and buried her there, he's laying on wild grass. The area where Father Katri was at, there was wild grass around. But what he was laying on was grass that was either pulled up or it was like matted and pressed down because it had been used for an actual ritual in the past. Here's Kevin with his creature bay. Jasmine, what's wrong? I only came to say goodbye. What? Wait, wait, wait. I don't understand. Just please talk to me. Why won't you let me in? know why I can't please just stay and talk with me see Kevin he's lonely he's a whole simp out here but I believe that the reason why he wants to talk to this creature I believe the creature looks like someone that he knows when Julie Matthews first arrived one of the creatures looked like someone that Julie knew I believe these creatures can look like someone you know, and that's how they trick you into talking to them and letting them inside. Like in episode one, the creature, the old lady was saying that she was her grandmother and the little girl was like, no, you're not my grandmother. My grandmother's deceased. Well, the creature more than likely looked like her grandmother. And that's how the little girl was convinced to let her inside. So this creature who Kevin's talking to, this is probably a girl that he liked or a girl that he knew. And that's the reason why he's so fond of her, even though he knows this is a creature. You said you liked me. I do. I can't keep coming here knowing I'll see you, but never get to feel you. Knowing you're afraid of me, that you're disgusted by me. No. You always tell me how lonely you are in there. You have no idea how lonely it is out here. It wasn't my choice to be this way. Goodbye, Kevin. Wait, wait. Now there's a, a party going on downstairs. Everyone's having a really good time. You are the only one that I want to be with. You are the only one that I can really talk to. And it's because she looks like someone he knows. He was simping for her in the real world, whoever this woman is, and now he's simping for her now. You promise it'll just be you? No one else can get in? Not once we shut the window. I promise. Okay. See? Just the two of us. Just the two of us. My handsome boy. So she says, my handsome boy, the voices 
or the spirits of those who are deceased, they can hear and see everything. And so they know that this event right here is <laughs> what gets a lot of people in Colony House deleted and it messes up a lot of things. So when they're saying kill the boy, they're really referring to Kevin, not Ethan Matthews. The writers threw us a bone and they explained exactly what Fromville is. How many dimensions are there? Bosonic string theorists believe there are 26 dimensions, but super string theorists say there's only 10. And is that what this place is? Another dimension? Oh, no, no. This is a pocket universe. I don't know why Ellis was getting upset by hearing about this. I think Ellis was just being a hater. I know people were saying that he might be a mole. I think in terms of the mole, let me just address that right quick. So I don't think there's an actual mole. I think if there is a mole type person, it would be Sarah. And the previous one was Victor's mom. Anyone that the voices and the supernatural entities can talk to directly and manipulate them and get them to do stuff, they would be the best representation of a mole. But I don't think it's an actual person there that's helping to keep the experiment going. Pocket universe. All the like the blood symbols that we've seen, or we'll just call them symbols. In all of the symbols that we've seen, we always see a circle. There's three symbols that we've seen so far. Always a circle with the symbols. So the circle is the pocket universe that Fromville, the forest, the lighthouse, everything is inside of this pocket universe. And what a pocket universe is, is it's basically just a small part of a larger universe that is somewhat separate. So what I believe is this is the pocket universe. The line in all of the drawings, those are the three, the line in all of the drawings represents the border between two parallel universes. All right, we're getting into multiverse type of stuff. So that's the line between two parallel universes. All right, so first we'll start off with the one that we see Jade see majority of the time. And then this will be number one over here. So focusing on this one, this is the border of the pocket universe. This is the line separating pocket universe. This right here is universe A, and we have universe B on the other side. Universe A is parallel to universe B. There's also other universes like a C, D, E, F, G. For this example, we'll only use A and B. So the pocket universe is created where universe A and universe B are right next to each other. They are separate by a border. However, the pocket universe contains a piece of A and a piece of B. And the pocket universe in this example, A and B are both inside of the pocket with a border separating both of them. On the A side over here, this is us. We are crossing with our B selves where we're switching places in this. So our B self is crossing the reality border here at this point in time and this place crossing the reality border and trading places with us. This one is us. We are trading places with version B and we are crossing the reality border at a different time and place. Let's say using the stuff that was on the wall in the lighthouse and Tabitha's vision, this bottom part is 1506. I know I said it was earlier than 1506 for Fromville to be created, but in this example, this bottom part is 1506. This top part is 2022 
where Fromville takes place at the very top. So top and bottom. So in this symbol, we could say maybe this top part is 1978. And this bottom part we'll say is 1931. In this symbol, and this is what I believe, all theory of course, our version B is going to be in 1931 and trading places with us. Whereas we in our A version are trading places with our B version and we're gonna be in 1978. So by trading places, I mean that the A would now be in the B un parallel universe and the B will be in A's parallel universe. And this whole thing is a pocket universe that you can't like escape from, but the symbol when mixed with blood and other stuff, it gives you the ability to cross the reality border where the reality border represents not just space, but also time. So that's what this, so I believe the symbol that we've been seeing with Jade is him crossing into the B reality at different points of time. And so with the parallel universe, just kind of giving a crash course, not doing a deep dive. I'm not a phys physicist or a scientist or anything, but you can't leave the pocket universe. So everything that you do when you travel in time and space along the border is going to be within Fromville when you do this traveling. And so when Jade went to the Confederate soldiers, he crossed into the B in an alternate universe, a parallel universe within the pocket universe that this blue line circle represents. And that's where he's experiencing different things. So down here, this is the same thing, pocket universe, as the guy said in the clip, this line represents reality and also space. This is where B versions both cross into A, but A does not cross into B. I think the reason why the symbol would be like this is it's possible for perhaps two people from B to cross the line and not necessarily the same person, or it could be where both people can be on the same side and actually interact with each other across the line. So instead of you trading places, you're both on, you're both on the same side but just two different points in time along the reality line. And the last symbol is here with the borderline of the pocket universe. This line is reality. And this is where A and B are trading places exactly at the same time, the same space going to different universes in the pocket universe in Fromville. There may be more symbols to come in the future, but I believe that when trying to complete the ritual in the area that Father Katria was at, you may need something that is not in your part of the pocket universe. So you may have to travel to the other side to get something. You may want to communicate with yourself and someone else, which is another reason why you may use the symbol and it may come a point in time where you and someone else may want to both travel to an alternate reality to get something. And that's what this symbol right here is. All a theory. And I believe that when you put it on a wall or put it on something, you carve it, put it in blood. That's what starts the spell, kind of like the show Supernatural or just anything dealing with the occult. They put symbols on the ground or on the wall. Sometimes it's written in chalk or blood or written in something. And then there may be a potion involved. The potion could also be blood. Someone recites certain incantations. And then next thing you know, you can travel across the border 
to the other part of the pocket universe. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> it seemed far fetched, but the writers would not have included that in the show if it wasn't important. I mean, we're talking about the writers of Lost. It's not like, I mean, they could add stuff to throw you off, but when it comes to the writers of Lost, the themes that they used in the show Lost, I think they're going to have some of the same themes here and multiverse, parallel universe, all that stuff is kind of popular right now. And I think that's what they're using with this. And I believe that they had that brief scene that seems like it's small and minute to basically explain what Fromville is. So that's Kevin, that's the boy. If you notice, his chest has not been opened up. I think the creatures, when they open people up, they're using the organs and the blood to create symbols so that they can go outside of the pocket universe or possibly to travel to other realities. Because when they sleep, I believe they're able to hear the voices because the voices speak to them as well. That's how they know everybody's name. And I believe that the creatures too are trying to get out and they're using people's blood to do it and organs. The fact that she's washing her hands and cleaning up after deleting Kevin, I think the creatures, they try to keep clean and they want to have somewhat of like a human appearance because they've become more intelligent because of the talisman. I know people have kind of asked, you know, why I thought she'd be washing her hands and doing all that. I think that's the only reason because right now she's in the house and before she even opens the window, she's cleaning up herself. I think as more things get introduced, the creatures become more human like. And I think the creatures, to a certain extent, they want to be human and they're doing their own rituals in order to be, to become that. Because she even says that she didn't ask to be like that. They're doing things to become more human-like. And that's the reason why she's cleaning up after herself and even worried about blood being on her clothes because they're becoming more intelligent. I think they would rather be human than be the creatures that they are. The way she's looking, she's looking as if she's longing for how she looks right now. Like she wishes that she could be like this permanently and not be a creature. There's almost somewhat like a hatred as she's looking at herself in, in the mirror, like she's disgusted. I think when she was talking to Kevin, telling him, oh, I must disgust you. I think she was projecting. I think she and the other creatures are disgusted with themselves and they wish they could actually be human. Yeah, look how she's looking. She's not even looking at the stain. She's looking directly at herself while she does it. As if she's like disgusted, she's disappointed, she hates that she has to do that. She's not even trying to wipe it off. I think what she's really trying to wipe off is what she really is, which is a creature. And I do believe that she's disgusted with herself. And I think to a certain extent, they can't help what they do, especially when they start smiling and stalking their prey. And I always thought that it was funny that she would open the window and seek reinforcements. The creatures were, have always been creatures and they've evolved into looking human-like and they would like to be human-like and more human-like. And that's why when they go through the houses, they find different people's clothes and they put them on. Kind of like with Adam and Eve, when they ate from the tree of knowledge, they realized they were naked and they tied figs and stuff up over their private parts. I think the creatures are the same way where the talismans being put in the houses was equivalent to like them eating from the tree of knowledge. They realized they were naked and they started putting on clothes. I think he figured it out as far as the symbols. And he's the one that deleted everybody the night that Vincent's mom wanted, wanted Vincent to hide. Because I think he started talking about how they can go home, told Vince's mom that it required a lot of people to be deleted. Hi, Trudy. How do you know my name? We know all your names. <gasps> so I think they know all their names because the voices communicate with the creatures, just like the voices communicate with Sarah. The creatures, when they sleep, they probably travel to alternate realities, just like the people in Frumville do. And I think that a lot of dream sequences that we've seen while, while someone is 
actually asleep or daydreaming and they see something like we saw with Jade. I think that is where your consciousness is able to travel over the border of reality and experience something. The symbol, not only the symbol allows you to travel to the different realities, but when you dream, you're also able to cross the reality border, travel to, al to an alternate universe and either experience what someone else experienced in the past, present, maybe even the future. And that's how the creatures are able to know everyone's name. We have to go to the tree. So I believe the boy in white is a cherub. It's a childlike angel that symbolizes love and purity. So again, keeping with the theme of the Garden of Eden and that being like a pocket universe that Adam and Eve were in has been trapped in the pocket universe like everybody else. And that's the reason why he's helping people, even though he's trapped himself. I think there may be other cherubs and other childlike angels or regular angels that are trapped there. Like there's evil and there's good all of this place that's trapped in this pocket universe. And they've been there since the beginning of time back when it was the Garden of Eden, and even before then. Don't be like that. You were having so much fun. So I believe the talisman, in addition to being a part of a sundial, being a part of a ritual, I think the talisman also wards off evil because when it comes to power, a character, it's power and ability through biology, like Superman, through magic, like Wonder Woman, through borrowing power like the flash and he borrows the speed force or through technology like the green lantern and his ring. So those are the four different ways a character can get an ability or power in a story. So I believe the talisman is technology and that technology wards off evil. They also can use it to travel the different universes. And I believe that the reason why the talismans were originally in the tree when Boyd found them was because that tree was used as a portal. If they were using the talisman to ward off evil and prevent the creatures from attacking them, you'd only need one talisman. Boyd took like at least I think it was like 10 talismans. I think all of them have to be combined to activate the portals that will possibly take someone outside of the pocket universe. When they're putting the talisman on the wall, that's part of the ritual. The talisman on the wall creates a pocket universe within the structure. And things that are unable to leave the pocket universe are not able to enter into that place. And that's the reason why the talismans work. And I believe the talisman is technology like the Green Lantern's ring. We don't understand it. I don't think anyone's going to crack open a talisman out of fear that if you crack it open, it, it'll break and won't work anymore to see what's inside of it, to see how it works. The future's not ours to see. Sarah, Sarah.